Hey, thank you so much for watching, I'm Espen Croft, and welcome to a very special episode. You see, if you support me on Patreon for a full year, my top tier, then you get to choose a song, any song you want, and I'll make a cover of it. And one of my Patreon supporters has done just that. His name is Colin, and he lives in beautiful Brisbane, Australia, far away from what I woke up to this morning here in Norway. So Colin, it's so nice to have you with me here in this episode. Thank you so much for participating and thank you so much for your enormous generosity. I really appreciate it. Hi Espen, Colin or aka Teddy McSnuggins from uh, just north of Brisbane in sunny Australia. Thanks for the opportunity in doing this video with you. It's been a pleasure to have joined you on your ride from the early days on YouTube and through Patreon. Um, you've inspired me, you've inspired many people, and um, it's just great that there is still somebody out there that is keen to keep the 80s alive and to, uh, to show people, you know, just what an awesome era it was for music. Um, I'm just so glad and I will carry on being a long time Patreon with you. Um, it's, just been, it's just been great. Awesome, Colin. Thank you so much. But Colin, uh, please let us know why did you choose this song for me to cover, this is See You by Depeche Mode from their album A Broken Frame from 1982. Let me know why did you choose this song? So why did I pick See You by Depeche Mode? Well mainly I was there in Essex growing up when Depeche Mode first came around. Um, it was a pretty exciting time. Um, we had Depeche Mode, Talk Talk and then Yazoo, also Vince Clark, um, that came around in my local area when I was uh, when I was really enjoying the music scene, um, and to me, it's one of their early iconic songs, one that you can always go back to. Um, not my favourite Depeche Mode song, that is uh, "Walking in My Shoes," um, but still, I think an iconic song from them in the early '80s, and one that really fits with your channel. Sweet. Well, I think it was a good choice, Colin. I really enjoyed working on this track and I hope you and the viewers will like it as well. Since you've been following me for a while, I wonder, do you play any synths yourself and what's in your collection at the moment? Make music, uh, yeah, I guess. Um, play music, certainly. Um, I, I uh, used to be a uh, guitarist many years ago, playing in bands around the UK. Um, but more recently I've moved more back into keyboards um, and been learning how to play the piano properly. So um, I do have a selection of synths here and uh, that I love. Um, there's been an evolution through my lifetime, um, but currently my gear is uh, a Roland Phantom 7. I think this has really put Roland back at the top of their game, a, a, a really, really classy workstation uh, and beast of a beast of a synth. I have the Jupiter XM, which is the uh, the smaller version of the Jupiter X, um, an absolutely great little synth for uh, for you know simulating those uh, old analog greats of the day, the Jupiter 8, the Juno, and the um, and the JP8. 
um, they all, you know, they're just fantastic. It, it is a really great unit. Um, I mix that all for a Roland MX-1 mixer, um, but I also have a 88 fully weighted native instruments um, keyboard for which I play mostly with all my piano stuff. Um, and I do have the TR-8 um, uh, drum workstation from Roland as well. Um, I do have a few of the boutique modules as well. I've got the D05, um, I've got the SH01, and I've also got the JU06. Um, but of course now with the Phantom and the way that Roland are going with Zen, um, they're sort of uh, a little bit obsolete now because uh, everything that I can do with those I can now do with my Phantom and my uh, Jupiter XM. Um, I've also just bought, um, but I'm waiting for it to arrive, the new Behringer System 100 uh, modular units, um, which is like a true analogue um, recreation of Roland's old System 100M from the 80s, probably even from the 70s as well. So I'd just like to say thank you again for the opportunity and to wish uh, everybody, every one of your followers and Patreon uh, subscribers um, a great year, success and happiness and uh, hopefully um, we'll be able to move forward through 2021 into a, into a more, stable, more stable environment around the world. So take care and thanks again from Australia. Cheers. Thank you so much, Colin, for doing this with me. Again, I really appreciate it and I wish you a good summer to come and hopefully this whole uh, world situation will uh, soon turn to something more positive. I really hope so. Thank you so much again. Well, let's continue this video then with a full breakdown on how I made this track. And people, here comes the bomb. I did not use any hardware synths at all to make this. It's all done with plugins. I thought it'd be a fun experience for once and do this totally in the box. Well, sort of, because I have sampled some of my synths into the TAL sampler, so many of the synths you're hearing in this track is actually part of my Italo Disco synth pop sample pack and my TAL sampler digital collection volume one. I'll link to this in the video description. And I've used some outboard uh, hardware processing in the mixing and mastering session, but all the sounds themselves are coming from plugins, and I'll show you how. So, this is the arrangement window in Cubase, or Nuendo, which I'm using here. And we have uh, drums, we have bass, we have synths, and we have the vocals. I have a couple of tracks here as well that didn't make it to the final uh, mix, but I'll uh, show them to you in a, in a minute. So let's start from the beginning and see what we've got. So what we have here is that... Um, those contact samples. This is my voice. And we have the strings. And we have everything. The bass. And the drums. So let's solo uh, the drums and listen to them first. First of all, I, um, I tried out this uh, drum loop from my own sample library. This is just the tom, sequential circuits tom. So I found that this loop, which I've made of course, uh, sounds perfectly for this track. So I just broke down the individual parts, drum sounds, sampled those, and that's part of my um, Italo Disco synth pop sample pack that I actually have online. So all these sounds are available online if anyone's interested. I'll link to that in the description. So I broke down that uh, drum loop into the separate parts here. Kick. There's no hi-hats in this track, just the shaky tracks. Two toms. The 
tambourine that will do the work of the hi-hat as well. And those claps. The kicks are um, just enhanced a little bit with the, with the EQ because these sounds you're hearing here are all pre-processed, uh, like in the sample pack, by the way. So there's really not much going on in this mixer session because most of them are pre-processed. Uh, the snare receives just some uh, parallel compression, same with the kick, and with the bass. So that's the backbone of the track, uh, drums and bass. The bass is from the plugin OBX. Uh, let's check that out. OBX D, Virtual Analog Synthesizer. And all the sounds, like I said, except for that bass and my uh, vocals and sampled vocals are from my uh, library for the TAL sampler, the Vintage Collection Volume 1. I'll link to that in the description as well. And I have one bell sound coming from the um, PG-8X, uh, which you can hear uh, right before the um, vocals start up. So let's uh, mute the drums and bass and listen to the synths. That's from the original arrangement for that uh, Depeche Mode song. So some of the parts I've taken off the original arrangement and some of the parts I've added, like the intro here, which also doubles up in the bridge here. My motivation for doing um, a totally new part, uh, which is not part of the original arrangement at all, is because I wanted this, my version, my cover version, to start off uh, like it was done a little bit later in the 80s, something that maybe New Order or Pet Shop Boys would do. Uh, kind of crunchy, lo-fi pad sound. And some ambient vocals, vocal chops, vocal samples going on top. Hence my... Um, hence my uh, vocal samples. Pre-chorus has a couple of sounds. Get back to that vocalist momentarily. So with the bass. So let's check out the vocals. We have some vocal tracks here and I'll take you through it. Let's hear it first. All I want to do is see you again. Is that too much to ask for? Reverb. Some micro pitch slap. Chorus. And it's all sent out to, um, to receive some parallel compression. And I have um, compressors, vocal rides, more compressor, EQ, more compressor, limiting, and de-essing. There's no auto-tune on this. This is disabled. Keep 
keep me at a distance Don't trust my resistance But I swear I won't touch you All I wanna do is see you So what I do is I um if if I, if if uh, a bit of my vocals are flat as you can hear here let's solo that that's not good let's turn on the auto tune on here so with the auto tune in place it's um, it sounds good so what I usually do is I'll just cut that up and check out auto-tune, how much uh, off-tune it is, and then I'll just turn on a uh, pitch shift and just tune it manually uh, to that uh, degree. I think it's right to have it uh, pretty much in tune. And I press process. I won't do that now, but this is my usual workflow. That way, uh, I get rid of the artifacts of automatic tuning, like auto-tune. Uh, at the same time, I get my vocals pretty much in tune where I have to, and it sounds more real or more authentic, if you, if you will. The only uh, instances where I actually use auto-tune uh, on my vocals in a finished track is if I'm doing uh, a sort of live in the studio where I sing and perform live at the same time uh, then my pitch is usually pretty much off because I have to concentrate on so many things at the same time and I only have one chance of getting a, a great vocal then I'll usually turn on auto-tune in the final output uh, but these are uh, mostly considered demos anyway so I don't mind that really uh, rather that than having uh, a song uh, or a performance published that sounds very off-key, really. So let's continue uh, with that uh, second part of the second chorus, where I decided to, to drop all those harmonies from the original Depeche Mode recording and just go for uh, kind of very isolated vocals here, uh, just uh, a very simple, transparent arrangement during that uh, last part of the second chorus. Let's hear it. A little bit of uh, double tracking right here. Uh, I did have uh, those two tracks uh, done uh, earlier in the arrangement when I worked on this song. Let's hear what those parts actually do so you can decide if you think they should be there or not. A little bit high in this uh, demo here. But I decided ultimately to get rid of those parts because I felt that they uh, took up um, more space in the arrangement that I wanted. I wanted to have it transparent and just nice. So that's the intro part coming back again. Let's move towards the end of the song. And instead of singing those last uh, bars of the verses, the, the final verses, I decided to, to talk through those verses, uh, that verse instead of um, singing it. And to emphasize the words, I decided to add some um, 
harmonies underneath. And uh, yeah, let's let's hear it. So these are what I came up with. These are pre-mixed, uh, processed and arranged from before because there's lots of uh, vocal uh, ahs and stuff like that going on. So I just had to mix it down and pan it and uh, put reverbs on it, delays on it. Let's hear those in isolation. That part. Stay friendly like sister and brother, though I think I still love you. All I wanna do is... So that's uh, basically the arrangement. Uh, and what I've done after this, which I always do, is I mix all the different parts, drums, bass, synths and vocals, down to four stereo stems which I then process through my SSL6 mixer and analog outboard processing like EQs, SSL EQs and uh, master EQ, etc, etc. And then it goes to final mastering. That process in itself is documented in, my in some of my earlier videos. I won't show you that here. So this is basically the arrangement and why I did what I did in this song. And it was fun to do this all with plugins uh, instead of my hardware synths. But these are essential my hardware synths sampled and put into uh, sample libraries. Uh, the only exception is um, the bass, which came from that OBXD, and that uh, bell sound for. Uh, just before the, the, the vocals in the verses. So everything else is from my sample pack, Ital Disco Synth Pop sample pack for the drums. And uh, most of the other sounds are from my Tal Vintage Collection Volume 1. And these are all essential samples from my hardware. So uh, if it would have sounded different, if, I've, if I had recorded the hardware directly, well, who knows? That wraps up this episode, I guess. I had a lot of fun doing this with plugins only, for a change. Breaking up the usual workflow can often yield great results and sport a new flow of creativity also for me. And if you have comments or questions, 
please uh, leave them in the comment section and I'll try to answer as fast as I can. Also a big thanks to all my other Patreon supporters that makes it possible for me to do this on a weekly basis. Thank you so much. As always, I'm Espen Croft and I am the 80s. Until next time, cheers. Friendly, like sister and brother, though I think I still love.